It's commonly said that Smokes players are a different breed of gamer. Rather than having utility to help them take engagements, like flashes, stuns, or dashes, controller players have to think about how to shape the battlefield, controlling information, and creating favorable conditions to help their team succeed in the round. In Brazil, at VCT Lock-In, we saw Pancada play Omen on Haven as we took on Fnatic, the eventual tournament winners. And while we didn't win the match, we saw Pancada made several plays that deserve a closer look and could teach us all a thing or two on how to play Omen. Omen is a unique controller. His skill set allows him to dabble in a little bit of everything. He can fill the role of a traditional controller, smoke enough choke points, and helping his team execute into a site, while also using his blind to help stall pushes as well on defense. His ability to control the map from distances with his long-range smokes, which replenish over a certain amount of time, gives your team a lot of options. First, let's look at what your standard Omen play looks like. This is a very basic set of smokes that you need for your A execute. Having the smokes like this, and also having the blind from short as well into graffiti, allows you to isolate the site very well for your entries to come in and clean up the site, ready for a plant. From Leo, who's just anchoring that position. But it is down to Alfie in this 1v2. Spike gets planted, finds the kill. Smoke dissipating at just the wrong time for Zekken. And now he's backing away. Ten's holding close to the angle on graffiti, and he just found it anyway. The hound start with Death getting a kill on Dark and the rest of the team trying to get the uh, Garage control, but they stopped our control and we knew that the A side was easier to get, so we come back to it. That round, we knew they were playing side, so I made the best Omen stuff, so I smoke Heaven and CT and try to flash backside to Jet, Dash and try to get some kills. It's kind of obvious, obviously, but it's so strong. It's a very nice combo. Now that we've seen the standard play of Omen for an AXQ, let's look at how we can add layers to this to help deceive the enemy, work the map and create some pressure elsewhere to give us some favorable rotations when we go for the XQ. In round nine, we start by smoking the garage window. This allows us to go in and challenge the Killjoy utility, which has been there for most of the game. As you can see, we took time to replenish the smokes and actually reset and go for an AXQ again. The ability to regenerate these smokes allows you to add all these layers into your play to help deceive the enemy and maybe pull them into areas that you're not actually going to end up ending. That they aren't rotating anybody over to A just yet. Boaster's hanging around for a little bit, now only just starting to make his way over. They might not be ready for this A explosion. Risky maneuver that could be played there. The stun is going to force Durkin to not be able to scope in now. He can't really help them out, but already Boaster's trying to at least relieve some of that pressure, but it's spam into hell. Catches onto Dirk at a common angle that he was playing. Two players, a Fnatic falling, including Chronicle, make that three. Leo opens himself up so wide there. Unfortunate timing with the smoke just fading away. Perhaps that was part of it, what they were discussing, the contact play to make sure that Fnatic didn't have as much information to work with, that they couldn't rotate effectively. We started the round taking garage control. You guys can see I smoked one on the window garage and the Omen smoke is so good because the smoke come back so fast, so we were able to come back to A and do the same exact with the whole smoke. That round, we knew that they were floating inside, so we start garage and come back fast to 2A to try to get a weak side. So we, we knew that Dirk was playing like alone with Operator. So we come back fast and try to, to take the space to, to get a, a good exec. So Buster was playing very good on shards, so that how we went by long. It's basically the same stuff, the same exec, but in different, different positions. So it's the same shit. Uh, smoke Rev Heaven, Smoke City, and Flashback Side, Jet Dash, and GG. Another key part of Omen's kit is his blind. This allows him to make a lot of aggressive individual plays, especially on defense. In round 14, we see Pancada use this to great effect. So in this round, we have a setup where we have Sassy already pushed on short, and there's a KJ turret giving us information on where the people are pressuring short. Sassy is able to get one kill and get traded out, and relays the information that there are far more enemies coming up this choke. Along with the KJ turret still relaying that information, Pancada is able to throw his blind down to isolate these three attackers and end up mopping up two kills. The key thing to think about when it comes to Omen's blind is how the map geometry affects the effectiveness of this flash. Pancada is a master of positioning, and you can see that his pre positioning into this round allowed him to make this specific play with this specific piece of utility. Yeah, the Omen Paranoia is so strong away because the spots is straight, so it's easy to take fights with the Paranoia. So that setup, we were trying to 
bait Sassy, but Fanek knew and tried to pull me. So after the fight, I need to use my paranoia to, to get some kills. So it's a pretty nice play. The last part of Omen's kit that I want to talk about are his teleports. He has two kinds of teleports, two short range TPs, and his ultimate, which is an extremely long range teleport, which can change the entire complexion of the round for your opponent. On Haven specifically, the ability to teleport and use the natural verticality of the map is essential, which is why you'll see a lot of Omen players in this map. But what I really want to talk about is his ultimate and how in round seven, Pankada uses it to nearly pull off an incredible 1v3. So if we cut to the round, we've got to a scenario where we've kind of been plugged down C long. It's really hard for us to make a lot of progression, but Pankada does have possession of the spike and he can use his teleports to go all the way to the A site. With possession of the spike, he's able to take himself out of C cubby all the way to the A site and plant the spike. Even though he doesn't win the 1v3, he did a fantastic job of isolating the attackers for the oncoming retake. Both I quite spawn like this. and a link. It's really smart. He's just the a bunch of misinformation into it, but this fight now by Leo Him meeting him into short. It's Moving massive. The first kill. It's massive. Takes it down to a 1v2, but he's given away what? where he is. What is that? Chronicle so far ahead of his teammate. There's no trade in sight from Alfie and out of paranoia. Waiting for the tap of the spike. And there it is. Rips his way across, a full blind. Another tap from Alfie here, but still biding, waiting. Smoke ready and waiting. Wide swings of it, Alfie here. Uh, that round start with Fennec aggressive play. And we were only holding position, so we get some kills. And after, we tried to group to see, but Alpha Hair played very well with the operator. And they flew the site with the Brit ult, so I didn't get option and I, I would 2A and try to, to play the 1v3 situation. I tried to play three 1v1s, so I started with the smoke CTs because they don't know where I was, so it's pretty nice. I get a kill and tried to isolate one more fight. Unfortunately, Alpha Hair was with his turret, so the 1v1 was hard because I was so low at P. But it was a great clutch because I, I played two, two 1v1s, so three. As you can see from these rounds, a good controller player can have massive impact on their team's success. Hopefully these examples will inspire you, and next time you're playing ranked and nobody's locked in controller, why not give Omen a try?